Welcome to the RCO's A to Z of the organ. Today is T for temperament. If you're watching this, I suspect you're familiar with the concept that an octave consists of 12 equal semitones. And if we take the note that I've just landed on, that is the A that most modern day orchestras tune to, the audio frequency of that note is 440 hertz. If I was to play the octave immediately above it, the audio frequency of that A is 880 hertz. But note isn't just one single fundamental frequency, there's a whole series of other sound waves that interact, and they interact to make a, what's called a harmonic series. Now, the first interval different to a unison in the harmonic series is that of the perfect fifth. And this interval is tricky because it occurs as a result of the ratios between the harmonic sound waves and not simply as a division of 12 equal parts. And this creates a slight strange effect and this is something that the Greek philosopher Pythagoras investigated. He worked out that if you played 12 uh, ascending perfect fifths in a row, which basically takes you off like this, 12 times which gets you back to the same named note you'd expect a lovely unison but in fact it was slightly out of tune and this caused problems and so basically Pythagoras worked out that there was an anomaly which he called the comma. Now this is why temperament systems started to be designed because people were trying to uh, work out ways of avoiding this comma. Pythagoras himself created a temperament and this was a brilliant one because it had pure fourths and fifths and he simply stacked this dodgy comma in one particular interval which was rendered unusable but that wasn't too problematic when music was quite basic it was in modes and it didn't really modulate but the more complex music got the more necessary it became to try and get rid of that anomaly now, obviously, today we have equal temperament, which is, as I said at the beginning, uh, an octave divided into 12 equal semitones. The downside with equal temperament is that no particular key has a particular character. So uh, if you look back at some of the early temperaments, you can really see that there is, uh, you know, this one brings out a particular drama in G minor and why a composer might have written in particular keys for different concepts, different characterizations. And so let's look at the 17th century when a temperament called mean tone was being developed. Mean tone essentially looked at a really wonderful pure major third and adjusted the fourths and the fifths. Now, this was brilliant for the most part. However, the anomaly basically got stuck and the resultant effective uh, perfect fifth between a G sharp and an E flat sounded like this. Okay, I hope you can hear that's pretty disgusting. And that's known as the wolf because it growls. Um, and so basically there were certain keys that you simply couldn't play with. Now, I have to say, mean tone temperament is pretty cool. So I'm going to firstly play you um, a passage by Froberger in equal temperament and then I will play it to you in uh, mean tone temperament so you can hear the difference. I'll do a slightly shorter version in equal temperament. So it goes like this. real excitement to some of those chromatic passages. However, 
there are lots of different mean tone temperaments because people started to develop it to see if they could get rid of that horrible interval. Um, and so basically, even on my organ, you can have mean tone fifth comma, mean tone modified sixth comma, mean tone quarter comma Pietro error, and I've got to get my teeth in. And uh, then one by the organ builder Zilberman. I feel so, a bit sorry for Zilberman because Bach really didn't like the temperament he created because it still had this very, very obvious wolf. And as we all know, Bach was experimenting in all sorts of keys and wanted that flexibility. In fact, we know he went on to write his well-tempered clavier, which of course was famously in every single major and minor key. So towards the end of the 17th century, there developed uh, other types of temperament and particularly um, uh, temperaments which were well tempered, people were experimenting with various things. And one of the most famous of these is Werkmeister Weck, 3. And Werkmeister 3 basically took a pure perfect fifth and then each one ascending just made it slightly smaller, which still makes chromatic music really exciting but does go a long way to hiding this wolf. Now the first time I ever played in the Werkmeister temperament uh, a bit of Bach was the most exciting thing because uh, it just brought out where the harmonic clashes were, where you wanted to be driving towards. So I'm going to play you one of my favourite bits of Bach, the Bach G minor Fantasia, and I'm going to play you just the ending so you can hear this in the Werkmeister temperament. <laughs> and explore different temperaments because it opens up a whole different sound world and a world of possibilities. So thank you ever so much for joining me. Do look out for the next video in this series, which is the letter U. Take care.